Hey you! And welcome. My name is Mike. I can't. Hey you! And welcome. My name is Mike. And in this whole video, uh, what we're gonna do today is something just. just like a little. just a little bit different. Like me sitting in a chair, which you may have noticed just before. Hello. It doesn't work. Usually we would like look at a story, you know, from A to Z, right? From, from soup to nuts. But uh, well, this time I wanted to look at something. Like, I wanted to look at a topic as a whole from A to Z. Variety is the spice of life, and this is that in that chapter. This is the art of being bad at being really bad. That's what we're gonna look at. A host of stories from folk being unsuccessful at an art form. So I guess that means it's a great success. From outsourcing outsourcers times five to the all. <laughs> when I confessed to the undercover, I was joking, duh. And kind of everything else in between for love and money. Let's give these stories a goo. So to begin, why would ya? Well, I mean, I suppose that's something we look at in every video, right? The why, the motive. And it's never really pretty good, to be honest, but people are still mad. It's absolutely mad to do it. But a murder for hire, or attempted murder for hire, is a big ol' crime. Many of these people who contacted fake hitmen are still doing the, you know, the bottle thingy with the bars today. A sentence that can range from four years to dozens of years. And that's only if they're unsuccessful. And the reasons for it can be Silly as shit. For example, right, in 1991. Proud mother Wanda Holloway of Texas tried to hire a hitman to kill the mother of one of the girls in the local high school cheerleading squad. Why? I hear you're barking, big dog. Well, see, what happened is that the daughter of the mother Wanda wanted killed, uh, that daughter happened to beat Wanda's daughter out of a spot on the cheerleading squad. You know, Wanda was not having it, if you can believe that, and so wanted this girl's mother killed so the daughter would be too distraught to attend tryouts, and so on and so forth. The $2,500 contract was only on Mrs. Heath's life, but investigators say at one point Holloway considered a contract on Heath's 13-year-old daughter as well. She decided against it, apparently, because she didn't have enough money. In 2018, Mohammed Mohammed of Houston, Texas, get a attempted to hire a hitman for two grand. Who do you want gone? Well, that was a police officer for the Houston Police Department. You know, just gotta be pretty heavy going after a cop. And the why was interesting. It was interesting in like a very mundane way. See, this officer had been giving him tickets for code violations for his shipping company. He was pissed and wanted a hitman to throw acid in his face. I mean, I suppose that's really not that funny, but it was stupid. And other reasons for hiring a hitman can range, you know, to holy shit. For example, here again in Houston, Texas, I'm seeing a pattern. Clarence McNatt, a former Houston Police Department officer, he became estranged from his wife. And then he tried to hire two men to kidnap and rape her. He got five years for that one. I'm sure his ex-wife was only delighted to hear he got that. You have instigators and you have assassins. But in this whole video, we've just got undercover cops and idiots. The people I'll be uh, going on about tend to be, you know, a little bit on the smooth brain side. Not having a clue what they're doing, hence me making a video about them. So let's begin with Julia Murfeld, the Murdoch. In Muskegon, what a beautiful name, Michigan, there lived a happy little family. It was 21-year-old Julia, her husband, 27-year-old Jake, and their two children, ages four and two. What a lovely little family. But you ever think, you know, it's just not for me, that's... Because Julia sure did, and Jake, let's be honest, he was asking for it. He signed his own death warrant when he signed, you know, the... Uh, life insurance policy, so. See, Jake Murfeld had a $400,000 life insurance policy, and Julia was licking her chops at the prospect of that being in her bank account. And so, needless to say, he needed to be 85,000. It's easier than a divorce, and you get paid for it. Win-win. 
A clean break was what she was looking for when she asked restaurant co-worker Carlos to take care of him. 50 grand, pfft, a lot of garbage. And at first, Carlos just laughed. But after a couple weeks of her like incessantly asking him, he wasn't laughing anymore. That's when he realized she was serious as shit. So Carlos, he contacted the police. He said he couldn't do it. I'm up to my gills here at work. But he knew someone who could. Of course, that person who could was an undercover cop. Hey, JC. Yes. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Okay, so, so I guess we got a little business to discuss. Yeah. Uh, you know, Carlos kind of told me a little bit about what was going on, but why don't you go ahead and tell me what you know, um, said? Well, not entirely sure. I've been like, I don't know if the fence, like, I know I, I want it done. I'm just trying to figure out the when I want it done. It has to be on a Thursday because that's the day that I work. Harry told you how much, right? He said you mentioned 50. How, how, how are you gonna how are you gonna work that that's part? what I was wondering because with Carlos I was just gonna give him like eight or nine grand like every few weeks because um that way it's like under 10 and everything and all that crap so I don't know how you want to work that one well I mean I would prefer to have something you know at the beginning to see to well, make sure only, that you're uh, the only you're problem with that is this. I can't I don't have it until because it's all his life insurance gotcha. and so they met in a parking lot. She laid out a detailed plan of how to get into the house, what to take to make it look like a robbery gone wrong, all the hits, all the good ones. Well, how do you want it? How do you want it done? He mentioned a couple different things to me. Um, uh, if it looked like a robbery, a shot or something first. Yeah. Or well, like yeah, we were talking about insulin. Okay. Um, but you want it to look like a breaking? Mm -hmm. I can do it any way you want me to. <laughs> I don't want him to suffer, so I'll make don't, it quick and not. clean. Perfect. Okay. So you can do it painlessly. You know, breaking is not. I, would. I have a girlfriend who wants to move in with me, and I don't want her to be scared to move in with me. She th if she thinks that we got broken into and then Jake got, you know. Yeah, that's why she wouldn't want to move in. Yeah, so I'm kind of afraid of that because I want her to move in with me because okay. I don't want to live there by myself afterwards. Well, you tell me how you want it done. And so on and so forth. You can, see, you can see what really matters to her. Mainly, that he is not killed in their home. So that her gal pal who wants to move in with her will feel safe there. Though she later doesn't even give a shit about that. When I first decided to do this, like we, it's not that we weren't getting along, but I mean, I was just, it was easier than, as terrible as it sounds, it was easier than divorcing him. You know, I didn't have to worry about the judgment of my family. I didn't have to worry about breaking his heart. Uh, stuff like this is like kind of like a, a, clean, a clean ghetto image. Only her girlfriend knew who she was really living with. Yeah. Once I leave here today, it's on. Okay? So there's no calling it off. Once I leave from here, I'm, I'm planning, I'm doing it. You're going to pay up. Got it? I'm just going to take him head on there and I'm going to shoot him right in the face. Okay. Okay. So there's, I'm going to put a couple rounds right in his noggin so that there's no, you know, there's no accident. You know, no, no way he's going to, he's going to live. I mean, he's going to die. You understand that? All set? Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Good All luck right. to you too. It was shortly after her second meeting that old Julia was arrested and charged with solicitation of murder. That could have landed her up to life. My tears are not for your pain, Your Honor. My tears are for remorse. She pleaded guilty to the crime, and at sentencing, her husband Jake would be victim. Fortunately, the two people who matter most have already forgiven me. My husband, who actually sits behind me right now, has already forgiven me. And the second is, is God. He asked the judge to show her mercy. I wholeheartedly forgive my wife for all she has done in this act of hatred. Have mercy upon my wife. Calling her wonderful. A wonderful person. And godly. Godly woman. Even so much more so now than she ever has been. Where? Where? In 2013, she was sent away for a minimum of five years, maximum of 20. But is out and about today. Wonder how she's getting on with old Jake. So how often do contract killings occur. I mean, okay, obviously the ones we're looking at in this video are the ones when they don't occur, when they fail spectacularly, and it's pretty embarrassing for the people. Yes. But it's not so funny uh, when it succeeds, and we've talked about a shitload of those stories. 
According to studies, roughly 2 to 3% of all murders are contract killings. Here's a few bob to off bob. Did you bring the money? Okay. Alright. Okay. And when you think of hitmen and contracts, something like gangs or the mafia, you know, that usually comes to mind. But they in fact only make up a fraction of the actual dirty deed itself. Less than 25% of contract killings are gang related. According to a study by Birmingham City University, there are four types of hitmen hired by what's called the instigator. Holy shit, that name is rad. I'm going to hire a hitman just to be called. The instigators tend to be roughly 50-50 men to women, but hitmen tend to be nearly always men between 25 and 49 years old and unmarried. Studies show that nearly all hired killers tend to be psychopaths. Wow, what a revelation. Both the instigators and the killers tend to distance themselves though from the actual killing. Like when they've actually organized that and it goes ahead, the instigator, who, you know, the hirer of the killer thinks, you know, well, I'm not pulling the trigger. Whereas the killer is like, well, I'm just following orders. So as for the types of hitmen, contract killers you have, you, first of all, you got like the novice. That's basically your lad down the road who's bloody eager. Then you got your dilettante. Right, who's basically someone who doesn't know anything about killing, but is someone who is essentially broke and willing to do anything for money. If you remember the case of Joseph Saunier, he was killed by a hitman who was unemployed and down on his luck. That would be a dilettante. Then you got like your journeyman who tends, that tends to be like someone who's killed before, a member of a gang, some kind of stuff like that. Finally, you got the master, the phantom, the elusive man. These are people who are least likely to be caught. This is like your Agent 47 type, and they tend to be from military backgrounds with no connection to the area. So that's kind of how often it tends to happen, right? One in every 50 murder is a contract killing, and that's like your four types of contract killers. But why? Funnily enough, uh, the main motive for hiring someone to kill someone else tends to be romantic when good love goes bad. Again, we can go back to Joseph Saunier, uh, who, you know, it was a love triangle turned uh, into a straight line via a gun. Only 16% of murder for hires were financially motivated. That includes... Alright, you had my curiosity, now you got my attention. How much has set you back? The average is about 12 grand. Um, that's how much you would pay to have someone kill someone, which is like, Jesus, that's all? Why not hire a few? Well, that's what one person in China bought, unbeknownst to him. So most people, well, actually all in this video, uh, you know, they tend to outsource, right, they're outsourcing the actual killing itself. They're outsourcing it to a hitman. They don't want to get literal blood on their hands. Not for them. They say, but what if you outsource it to a hitman who outsources it to another hitman? And then they outsource it and they outsource it. Han Yu Hui, I know, I'm butchering it up, sorry. He was looking for someone uh, to take care of a competitor. He placed the bid a hell of a lot higher than 12 grand, let me tell you. I'm talking over $200,000 to... In 2013, Guangxi region, Yu Hui was being sued by a business rival. This was all over some real estate business. So Yu Hui decided to make the lawsuit go away uh, by just having them killed. So he hired a hitman for 200 grand. But that hitman, he scratched his noggin. He was thinking to himself, well, that's a shitload of money. Like, a lot. So I could just get someone else to do it and split the money with them. So he did. The first hitman hired a second, and he was going to pay the second hitman 100 grand, half of what he was being paid. The second hitman also thought, hey, 100 grand? It's a shitload of money. I could just hire somebody else to do it and split the difference with them. So the second hitman hired a third hitman, and was gonna pay him 50 grand. The third hitman had the same idea, as did the fourth. Woo! Yeah, the fourth hitman then hired a fifth hitman. But by that stage, the money had been getting cut in half all the way down. By this stage, the money was roughly about 10 grand, and the fifth, who wasn't arsed killing anyone for that much. So he told the victim to fake his own death, and together they staged a murder scene and took some pictures. This led to the police discovering the whole affair and arresting everyone. Don't overpay is the lesson here. Write that down. Because that's just what Valerie Cincinnati didn't do.
when she hired a hitman for $7,000 in New York City. See, $7,000 might get you to murder one person, uh, her ex-husband, wasn't quite enough to get the hitman to also murder her ex-husband's 13-year-old daughter. Valerie was a former NYPD cop and wanted her estranged husband, Isaiah, gone. The motives for the moida? Well, attention. She loved it. And money, she loved that too. She didn't want him getting any of his paws in her, like, government pension. She just wasn't having it. Beating the shite out of people who did Nothing wrong was also something she loved, but I mean, she was a cop. She had a number of restraining orders against her, not just from Isaiah, but from a previous husband. And even her current boyfriend fell down the stairs from time to time. So she asked her current boyfriend, John D. Rubba, Rubba Dub Dub, to hire a hitman for seven grand and have the ex taken out. Uh, John, instead, he went to the police when she asked him to kill the daughter also. And so this thing was on. John, of course, was supposed to contact a hitman to do the deed. He instead contacted the FBI. In fairness to Valerie, she did seem to have some knowledge of what the police could get from phones and stuff. Delete your text. I do delete my text. What do you mean? Are you dumb? I'm gonna erase everything. I'm gonna throw the phone away. Are you kidding me? I said ten not... days they could subpoena messages. They can subpoena these photos. So her real misstep was believing her boyfriend would actually help in a murder plot against a man and a girl. The FBI helped make the whole thing look legit as shit. They faked everything to make it look like a murder, even taking, you know, pictures of the crime scene, and then calling to her house to tell her, you won't believe it. Your ex-husband Isaiah has been murdered. Sorry about that. You mind having a seat for me, please? I'm sorry to be the one to tell you that Isaiah was found dead this morning. Are you kidding me? Yeah. So do you have maybe like a box of tissue you can bring for uh yeah, you get some stuff out? Do you like some water? <laughs> yeah. This just like doesn't feel real right now to me. I'm sorry. Like I no, can't okay, really I, believe this. I, I, like I I'm a cop. Like I can't believe this. You are a cop? Yes. Where? In the city? Yes. I'm trying to help you as like a cop, but I just um... Valerie, I, I don't need you to be a cop right now. Okay, you can you can be a wife and a mother. Okay, but I, but I do need you to try to answer some of these questions. You don't know of anybody that would want to harm him. <laughs> anyone want to hurt your heart? They then promptly arrested her. I'll be acquitted because I did not do this. After initially denying any involvement in the murder plot against her ex-husband, she eventually, after being confronted with all the information the police had, pleaded guilty. And guess what? She got a whole four-year sentence. Though she could be out after six months. Whoa. Bit weird that as a cop she didn't notice the whole thing. I mean, a cop, ex-cop, hiring an undercover cop. She mustn't have been very good. Hence being the ex-cop. Kind of funny, but this is even funnier. What if you weren't a cop, but you had worked on a cop TV show? And so then you got a story of like, uh, life imitates art when you try, or, try and hire a hitman. And it's essentially like the plot out of one of the TV episodes you worked on. Because it certainly seemed like life imitates art in Sussex, England in 2017. The Bill is a show about the Metropolitan Police in London. You know it yourself, like, the Rosas, you ain't got the bottle, and so on and so forth. Man, I need to stop doing accents. Ah, fuck it, I enjoy it. A producer on that show, The Bill, was 68-year-old David Harris, and he had a problem. Or thought he did. His problem was that he wanted his partner's fortune and had stopped differentiating between uh, TV shows and real life. See, the bill had been off the air for about seven years at this point, but it was still going on in his head. His partner was Hazel Allenson, partner of 27 years, and she had a fortune of her own and a house worth over 800,000 pounds. He wanted all that, and he wanted to run away with his sex worker girlfriend he had met at a brothel, and he was offering £200,000 for someone to do it. 
He first approached a car mechanic, asked him if he'd do the job for him. Yeah, hey, you spend all day tinkering with cars. Why don't you tinker with her butt? Right, uh, he turned him down, and then he contacted another person who contacted the cops. Whoa, he called the bill. If we can do it this week, okay, leading up to March the 1st, um, the car can be in your hands Tuesday or Wednesday, and 10 grand in, in your hand by the weekend. I would then put the 150 grand into your into your bag, into your hand. It would be cash. And it obviously, whatever happens, it will look like yeah. an accident or a mugging gone wrong or something of the yeah. sort. Yeah. All right. So what should I do? Should I just wait on a text from? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get in touch with you this evening when I've spoken to him. Okay. And then, then, yeah, we'll go from there. All right, mate. So I can, so I can sleep in peace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chris, I hope so, mate. I really hope so. Thank you, Chris. Oh, you big drink too. <laughs> big drink. And so David met with an undercover cop who would accept the discounted rate of only a mere one hundred and fifty thousand pounds to kill a defenseless old woman. And so David Harris was arrested in bed. Well, he was in the bed with a woman who's 40 years his junior, which is kind of creepy. His defense, by the way, David Harris's defense was that he was writing a book. He was writing like a John Le Carre spy novel. So it was all research, you know? His spy novel was about uh, an old guy who fell in love with, he, essentially, his novel was apparently about his own life. It was about like an old guy who fell in love with a young woman and wanted to kill the wife. And he was like, I was just researching it to see what would actually happen. He didn't actually want, for God's sake, anyone killed. You know, when he asked to have someone killed. Persistence is evidence of his approach of not one, but three different supposed hitmen. This has been a hugely difficult time for the victim who has been significantly affected. He was sentenced to 17 years in prison. Hazel, the woman he tried to have assassinated, still visits him today behind bars, which is just like Julia Murfield all over again. She fully supports him and she wants him out of prison as soon as possible so they can enjoy, uh, you know, their retirement together, their golden years. That's just sad. And finally, I've been saving you probably the most well-known case uh, for last. This one's a doozy, you know, I'm sure you're, you're, you've heard of it. And it, it kind of uh, epitomizes, you know, the art of hiring fake hitmen and what to do if you get caught. You know, she needs no introduction, but I'll give her one. Anyway, this is a story of Dahlia Dipshit. Sorry, Dahlia Dipolito. The place, Boynton Beach, South Florida, the year 2009. The characters, and they were characters to be sure, Dahlia and Mike Dipolito. Newlyweds, in August 2009, they had just passed their six month anniversary. And on the fifth of that month, Dahlia was up early in the gym. While she was there, the police called her darling Dahlia and asked her to return home early that morning to the home where Mike was. They had some bad news. Mike was shot dead, if you can believe that. Holy balls! I'm Sergeant Ramsey. I'm, I'm the one that called you. Thank you for coming. I'm sorry to call you. Listen, we had a report of a disturbance at your house and there were shots fired. Is your husband Michael? Okay, I'm sorry to tell you, ma'am. He's been killed. No, 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 no. He's, been, he's been killed, ma'am. I'm sorry. No. Listen, no, no. Try to calm down. No, no, Listen, right now what no, we, do, we need to get you to the station. No, we need to get you to our no, police station. No, we, I can't let you stand, man. We have to do our job. No, Does he have enemies? Is there anyone that would want to hurt him? Okay, who would want to hurt him? Witnesses said they saw a black male running from me. I can't let you see him, ma'am. Ma'am, I cannot do this right now. Ma'am, I can't do it. Detective Yopi. They had a big old crime scene set up. It looked really legit. Uh, though it wasn't just for Dahlia, the crime show, Cops, what do all, that was there too. So then how did this whole like shenanigans, you know, get to be shenanigan? Well, Dahlia DiBolito, born Dahlia Muhammad, was a real estate agent, escort and gold digger. Her escorting uh, is how she met Mike DiBolito, and the pair of them had stars in their eyes and a taste for the finer things in life, even if they couldn't afford it. 
Though they would damn sure try and get there. Mike, he was married when they first met. And to furnish his lifestyle, he was a scammer by trade. The like the Wolf of Wall Street. More like, I guess, the Wolf of Skid Row. He did two years inside, and when he got out, uh, he met Dahlia. Though he was still on parole until he paid back, essentially, everything he had scammed people out of. And so Dahlia and Mike, they married after only six months. So now, he was, uh, you know, like, uh, uh, dead. I'm sorry for your loss. I don't want anybody else to Alright. Listen, is there anybody that you know that you think would want to kill your husband? I'm just going to stop coping, you said. For what? He's a very stock fraud. Stock fraud? This is tragic. Dahlia, she thought, ooh, it could, you know, possibly be related to the people he scammed out of money. Someone had their revenge! I mean, apparently. People weren't happy that he was getting on probation because it's a lot of money he's got to pay back. Well, when you say people, who are you talking about? People that were involved with him before? Or? A little bit of everything. This was supposed to be something. When he got off probation, it was supposed to be between us. And he went and he told, you know, friends of his, he told, you know, certain people. And everyone kind of talks. And he's constantly running into a lot of the guys that he was on probation with. Like, a couple of days ago, we ran into someone. And that was... A target. I mean, you know. And but happy days for Dahlia, right? You just six months out of marriage. Now she gets all his shit. Nice. You're lucky you went to the gym. I don't know if you know he was shot. He was shot twice. And I want you to know all this. Do you know this? Did they tell you out there? <laughs> somebody, somebody call out there and see but Dahlia was a woman who used her sexuality to get what she wanted, not just from Mike, but from all the other men she had hanging out of her. One was named Mohammed Shihada, businessman, convenience store owner, and actor, who on his acting portfolio page, his skills include being able to read and memorize things, a rare skill among actors, and his inspiration is Nicolas Cage. He's everyone's. So what does this have to do with the murder of Mike? Well, he was a rube for Dahlia. She could basically get him to do and give her whatever she wanted. And after she married Mike, she began telling Muhammad, you know, tales of Mike was abusive, he'd beaten the shit out of her, this big Italian bloke's knocking her around. Muhammad believed her until she asked Muhammad, you know, kill him. He backed out, called the cops. And so this thing began. Muhammad, he was wired up and he introduced her to the hitman. Wink, wink. How are we going to do it? Let's go ahead and do it, like, at the house. Like, how do we, how do we, how soon could you do it? I could do it Wednesday morning, you know, he gets two in the head. That's it, you know, I take a couple things with me, break a couple windows, make them look like a robbery that went bad, and it's all over, and I'm gone out of there. Because I don't know how well you have the pressure. You understand? I don't know, you know, because I don't want No, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not allowed to do that. Like, I don't want to do that. Like, you know, like, oh, what a cute little girl, whatever. You know, but I'm not. That you are. You're beautiful. And so the hitman made sure to tell her to leave her house early that morning, the 5th of August, go to the gym, and while you're out, I'll take care of business. Listen, we had a report of a disturbance at your house, and there were shots fired. Her performance is absolutely amazing. She she should be the actor, not Muhammad. Let's be honest. The game's over with. Okay? There's no more games with you and I. Now we're going to get down to serious business. I want to know if you know this guy. Come here. Bring this guy in here. Get over here. Get over here. You know who this guy is? No. You've never seen him before? I've never seen him before. Ever. Do you know her? Put your head up and look at her. Put your head up. I've never seen her. What were you doing coming out of her house? They even got the undercover cop to come into the interview room. He was still pretending to be the killer, they just wanted to see if she would crack. She didn't, and denied meeting him or planning anything. You're going to jail today for solicitation of murder. You're under arrest. That's an undercover police officer. We filmed everything that you did. Recorded everything that you did. You're going to jail 
for solicitation of first degree murder of your husband. I didn't do anything. Did you hear what I just told you? I heard what you said, but I didn't Everything, do anything. listen to me. Everything has been recorded. What do you want to do here? I didn't Dying. do anything. Listen to me. I didn't do anything. You're going to jail. I didn't jail. do anything. Please, I didn't do anything. Don't tell me you didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. You're going to jail today. As soon as I'm done, oh they're going to come in here and handcuff you and take you to the Palm Beach County Jail, book you for solicitation of first-degree murder on your husband. Your husband is well and alive. Thank God. Oh, yeah, thank God. Can I see no, he doesn't want to see you. I'm so to see him. He doesn't want to see you. Yes. You better quit your plan. Listen to me. I want you to quit your acting and get this over with. You know what? Yes, you are. Okay. You know what? You need a real good attorney. I don't know what's going on, please. Oh, my God. He's alive. Come here, please. Come here. Yes, come here. Then they ran out of patience, and Mike was outside the interrogation room the entire time after they woke him up that morning with the message, your wife wants to kill you. I didn't mean it, I swear, as she begs him to believe her. <laughs> April Fools. You attempted to hire someone to kill somebody else, meaning your husband, okay? And that's why you're here, and that's what you're getting charged with. Okay, no. Do you, no, you don't understand? Or? No, I never did that. It turned out that she actually tried to frame him more than once by planting drugs in his car. And this wasn't even her first attempt to kill him. She had poisoned his, like, a coffee with an antifreeze before. I didn't do anything and I didn't plot anything. And when she went to trial, her defense? Acting. It was all an act. She knew she was being set up. She knew it was a stink. She knew she was being recorded but she wanted to be a reality TV show star. And so, you know, it's like, it's like Jersey Shore. The evidence will show that reality TV often glorifies what we call bad behavior that appeals to the gullibility of people. The evidence will show that the plot for the contract killing of Mike DiPolito was never real. It was a stunt. It was a hoax, a ruse, a plan that Mike DiPolito, whether he'll admit it or not, hoped to capture the attention of someone in reality TV. The evidence will also show you that as it so happened, one of the original and possibly the oldest reality TV show on television is also involved in this case. The TV show Cops was coincidentally in South Florida to ride with the Boynton Beach Police Department during the week that Ms. DiPolito was arrested. We believe that the evidence points to an orchestrated stunt to get Mike DiPolito in front of the cameras. We get to a point where Sergeant Sheridan tells Ms. DiPolito that her husband is alive. And what does she say? Thank God. Thank God. Dahlia's of the belief that at this point, Michael DiPolito is going to come in and explain what they are attempting to pull off. It's time to end the scam. Sergeant Sheridan allows Dahlia DiPolito to see Mike DiPolito outside the interrogation room. And you'll hear Dahlia DiPolito calling Mike, asking him to come into the room, speak to her, pleading with him to explain what's been going on. Mike was in on it, Muhammad was in on it, yada, yada, yada. They all wanted to be reality TV show stars. And so they thought if they kind of went along with it, it would explode the way it did. It's a ballsy defense, so I'll give it that. Did you ever try out for a reality show? No. Did you ever have aspirations to be on a reality show? No. Did you ever speak to a producer about an idea you had for a reality show? No. Did you ever write a script for a reality show? No. She was found guilty of solicitation to commit first degree murder 20 years. Until she was able to appeal, and it was successful due to a jury issue. So she went on trial again. 
This time, the defense was that there was serious misconduct on the part of the police due to it being filmed for the TV show Cops. And so the police overreacted by staging, you know, the fake death. The police led her along. The police were playing it up. That retrial ended with a hung jury. And so she went on trial a third time. This time she was found guilty. 16 years in prison for Dahlia Dipshit. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you found it interesting. This is this is a video I kind of wanted to make for a while because there's been so many different stories of murder for hire plots and you know the fake murder murder for hire plots. And I kind of wanted to mash them up into a big old video. Uh, in fact, there were so many of these stories. There will be a part two uh, of this coming coming soon, and it will have some more of these crazy stories, some internet-based ones, and all that. It's coming. Daytime, nighttime, sometime. But for now, we should leave it there. Really, uh, thanks you, thank you again so much for watching. Um, and please, as always, you know, just uh, take care of each other and yourselves, because I love you, my kid.